Yes, sir. Good evening, members. Uh, good evening, Venu, sir. Good evening. Glad, glad you joined us this evening. Very, very delighted and we'll be happy to listen to you. I'll not take much time. Uh, I will just introduce what KSC is all about to our members who have joined us today. KSC is a 65-year-old organization of uh, chartered accountants. Uh, we have been very active in conducting programs. Uh, recently, we conducted a program on in uh, Mysore on RRC. We are doing a program which is a very recent one in IT80. This is uh, for those members who want to practice in IT80 and uh, want to make that as a career. Uh, it will have mentorship. It will have uh, uh, you know, virtual program. It will also have a live presentation of cases in front of sitting IT80 members uh, in National Law School. So uh, I thought I'll also speak about that program. And for those uh, participants who have still not been member of KSCA, please do become member of KSCA. And uh, and also we have one more program which is on 10th and 11th. 10th we have 11th we have a family day and 10th we have badminton. So I thought I'll just inform the uh, recent events of KSCAA. And this has been the, the current topic which is there is a very relevant topic. I think we would not have got any better person than Venus sir addressing this. Uh, and we're, we're very delighted sir. Uh, uh, I'll not take much time. Uh, uh, and also one more thing is the fees of KSCA is rising in a very short period. It is getting double. It is currently at 2,000 rupees for members who are more than five years and 1,000 rupees. It's a lifetime fees and we are raising the fees into two. So uh, if you want to use the opportunity to have a subsidized prices, uh, please become a member of KSCA. Uh, uh, Venus, sir, uh, the, uh, you can continue the presentation. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, now I will just uh, provide an introduction to the today's speaker, uh, C. A. Venu Gopal Gela, sir. C. A. Venu Gopal Gela is a partner in uh, Mrs. Venu and Vinay uh, Chartered Accountants, um, uh, qualified in the year 2002 by securing All India 45th rank. He is also a certified Information Security Auditor. He has also completed various other certificate courses from ICIA, namely DISA, courses on business valuation, courses on internal audit, uh, courses on fraud detection and forensic accounting. He has also completed a one-year course from IIM on data analysis and business intelligence. He is an active speaker at ICI on GST, especially on technology and, impl and its implementation challenges. He has author authored various industry-specific handbooks on GST and also conducted workshops on filing returns with ease. He has developed a lot of Excel-based free utilities on GST like JSON read and creating JSON file GSTN validator, composition versus regular uh, scheme benefit analysis, GST impact reader, etc. Uh, his major areas of the practices are design and development of internal controls and process documentation, consulting in ERP implementation and uh, its migration, management consultancy for business analysis and growth and design management of information systems, GST implementation and integration of accounts and return filing utility. utility. He also conducted various workshops for corporates on use of technology, improve efficiency at work using Excel, building automated reports from accounting and financial applications. He was behind in the development and managing of cloud applications like TaxMile, Insta uh, Financials, and others. Now I welcome C.I. Venugopal, Gil Venugopal Gilla, sir, who is an expert speaker of this webinar. Sir, welcome to you for the webinar. Over to you, sir. Sir, you are, you are muted. Thank you very much. And uh, firstly, I'm happy to be part of uh, KSCA speaking on this subject, especially in the month of December, where people are definitely eagerly waiting uh, to file the GSTR 9 and 90. And uh, I had been part of uh, KSCA intensive GST session, which, uh, uh, which has been conducted in Mysore last month. I should definitely appreciate the uh, the design thinking of uh, Pramod and the team. Pretty very good job, and uh, I'm sure in light of that, people who want to practice I I, I think that is again a wonderful opportunity which KSC has been has uh, working. Yeah. So without uh, uh, wasting much time, let us start the. All right. Again, screen is visible, right? Yeah, visible, sir. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, so today's session is about the use of Excel and the other automation tools in preparation of GSTR 9 and 90, the annual return. Now, I'm sure most of you, like uh, whether you are practicing in GST or not practicing in GST. Filing of annual returns has been like a, it is an annual exercise. And everyone have been uh, doing it uh, for uh, quite a while now. So this session, I would focus more on use of technology in automating GSTR 9 and 90. Print, uh, it's like I'm sure the form annual return GSC are nine and ninety. I think approximately four and a half years we've been seeing it now. Five years of GSC is over. We have seen the form, and uh, uh, I'm sure every one of you are aware of the form and the content. What I thought, maybe as a revision, I will briefly touch upon the basics of GSC are nine and ninety. When I say basic, it's like it could be any discussion on GSTR 9 and 96. Uh, I'll spend roughly around 45 minutes in understanding this. Then I have designed two tools for today's session where we use Excel as a tool to extract the data. I have kept the uh, tally as one of the source for extraction of the data and uh, uh, whichever is the ERP today, the every ERP has an open connect uh, connector. So we will use those connectors in extraction of the data and how do we use that for my GSC and 990 preparation? Whatever is the information that is required. Of course, the basic information, the trial balance, everything is there. Then I am also demonstrating the another tool. So let's say I'll spend around 15 minutes or 30 minutes in this, another 15 minutes in doing another tool and uh, roughly around 15, 20 minutes on the question and answer. So this is how I have structured the session. Feel free to add your questions whenever, as and when it is coming, if something is missing or something you would like to add, definitely do add, enrich the knowledge of the other participants. I see in the panel, even Subramanya is there, Mukul is there, uh, there are other uh, uh, attendees who are actively in GSC. So uh, the, there could be a good knowledge uh, dissemination and discussion. Starting with the legal provision, we all know GSPR 9 is required to be filed by every registered person. That's what the uh, section 44 read with the rule 86. However, the e-commerce operators and the composition dealers 9A, 9B currently is not applicable. And this form is not required to be filed by the ISD or TDS or casual taxable person, non-resident taxable person. For them, the filing of this annual return is not mandatory. What is that we need to know about it is the turnover limit for filing is those whose turnover did not exceed two crore, they don't need to file the annual return and whose turnover did not exceed in five crores, they don't need to file audit GSTR 96. And both these forms, as of now, it is mandatory that it has to be filed as on 31st December. Going by the other trend that we have seen in this year, don't, file, don't expect any extension. And there is no reason for extension to happen. And uh, let us not also uh, spoil our either New Year or Sankranti festival. So let us try to complete it on time. Yeah. The first question that would come up is if you have turnover less than this threshold limit, should I be able to file? Answer is yes. You can file it. What happens if you don't file? Whatever the, if in fact, if you log into the portal and see there are data which is auto-populated, those auto-populated values will be deemed as if that's the number, that's the final. So it's better you file that, yeah? And uh, just to understand the form, very beautifully drafted form, GSTR 9 is divided into six parts and 19 tables. Part one is the basic information. What is more important is part two, which talks about liability, table four and table five. Table four, which talks with the transactions which have taxable value, table five transactions without taxable value. 
Part 3 is input tax credit, table 6, 7, and 8. Table 6 about input tax credit availed. Table 7, input tax credit revered. Table 8 is a reconciliation with GSTR 2A and 2B. In fact, understanding of this annual return form, 9 and 9C is very important. Also, understanding the context at which this form is designed is also equally very, very important. If we understand the context in which the form is designed, I think filling the data will be will be automatic. After the liability and ITC, the obvious thing is the tax liability discharge, the payable and paid. So part four deals with a tax payable and paid, which is in table nine. Ideally, the form should have got closed at this point. But however, we know the GST or GST itself as a design, there is no concept of revising a return. Once a return is filed, it cannot be revised. Since the return cannot be revised, it is mandatory that you find a way to correct your uh, amendments through an amendment table which is given in the subsequent month return. That means if I made a mistake, I have to correct that mistake in the next month and I cannot reopen the same month. Likewise, my GSTR 3B, if I have made a mistake, and 3B, I can call it as an uh, advanced chalan or a little higher version of it, uh, tax payment it's, uh, between a return and a chalan, neither a return nor a chalan, something like that. So if I have made a mistake in 3B, I can also correct the same thing in 3B of the next month. If I have short paid, pay it extra. If I have excess paid, use it less. If I have short availed, avail it later. If I have excess availed, revise it in next month. These are, these are four possible things that can happen, right? But when I keep doing it in the next month, the next month can be spillover to the next financial year also. The spillover can happen to the next financial year. And we all know the due date for correcting all of this was September return, which is October. Effective this financial, effective from this October, they have extended instead of October, the due date has been taken to 30th November. And when we say 30th November, it is precise 30th November. It is not a return of November. So any returns that have been filed up until November, that means a March 22 return filed in November, you can use it correction, or October return which you filed in November, you can use it for correction. That means any returns filed up to 30th November. In fact, this is a very good move because the IT returns get finalized, tax audit, everything gets finalized only at that point while preparing the stat audit, you make you get into corrections because Today, the accountants are getting a good qualified accountants are very few. And uh, maybe some error could have creeped in during by the tax practitioners. When a CA is looking and finalizing the uh, income tax return, that's when he would guide saying that these are the errors that needs to be corrected. So the September month, which is filed in October. So in the month of October, you compile all those corrections and by 30th November, you correct it and file it. So these corrections which you have done up until November is captured in your part five, table, four, table 10 to table 14. However, government wants an additional information. So that additional information is captured in part six, table 15 to table 19, right? This is broadly how GSTR 9 is designed. And as I said, a very thoughtful drafted document. Now to start with, what is the content that gets into GSTR 9? Like, uh, these are the forms, these are the uh, various tables. What should be the content that needs to get in? And by the way, uh, as we speak, uh, let me tell you a couple of things, wherever, of course, I'm sure uh, this session might be recorded and may be available, but uh, make notes, use your pen and paper, make notes. And uh, second thing, make sure that you have a blank form to ask and uh, uh, you should pardon me because I will get into table and subtables as we get along. If you have a question, feel free to put the question then and there. The first, in terms of understanding the context of this form, what is the content that needs to get into this form? Please understand, GSTR 9 is a form where you are informing what is so. When we say what is so is what happened. When it comes to the turnover and the liability, you are not going to disclose the turnover and liability that according to you is your turnover and liability. You are only going to disclose whatever is the turnover on which the taxes have been paid. If you have not paid any taxes, there's no place which you can report it in GSTR 9. Or when you don't have intention to pay taxes, you will not find that place in GSTR 9. 
So GSTR 9 is a place where, with regards to the liability, you will disclose the turnover on which the taxes are paid. When we say the tax payment, it could have been paid through 3B or it could have been paid through DRC 03. Now, the DRC 03 payment, the government said, even before filing your R9 or just you file your R9 and pay the taxes. But the point is you making the payment of the taxes. If the tax is discharged through 3B or through DRC 03, then you report that relevant information in R9. If the taxes are not discharged, then, or when I said not discharged, not going to be discharged, then you will not find an entry for this in your GSTR 9. So GSTR 9 is an information written like your GSTR 1. So after you file your GSTR 9, you will not have an option to make the payment as you file your R9. It is not a return like the 3B, where you discharge liability. R9 is not a place to neither a discharge liability, claim a refund of excess payment, nor availment of input tax credit, nor reversal of input tax credit. R9 is a place where you report what is so. What is so is the taxes that have been paid through 3B, paid through DRC03. And when I say paid through DRC03, that payment could be before R9 or after 9 but the payment is happening. That is the context for GSTR 9. That means you are, info, you are reporting the factual information. The factual information when it comes to turnover and liability, the turnover on which the taxes are discharged is your part two, red with part four, sorry, red with part five. And when it comes to input tax credit, you might have made a purchase, mm -hmm. but ITC means what you have availed. So what is reported in 3B gets into part 3. What is not reported will not get to. You made a purchase, it is there in 2A, it is there in your books of accounts, but you did not report it in 3A, then it will not get into this. Yeah. So these are the uh, basic thing about your annual return. Before I move to my mind, see, let me see if there are any questions. Uh, request the participants to put the questions in the Q&A uh, because it's difficult for me to open chat and the Q&A. Uh, there's one question. Sumuk is asking the turnover definition. Two subsection six of the act talks about the turnover. Turnover means taxable turnover, exempt turnover, export, everything. And it has to be computed fan -wise. If I have a registration in the state of Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Telangana, all the three states turnover has to be added to see what is my aggregate turnover. And let's say I have a turnover of two crores, two crores, let's say 1.8 crore, 1.8 crore, 1.8 crore in all the three states, right? Sub two crores in all the three states. But when I put together in all the three states, yeah, when I put together in all the three states, I'm at 5.4 crore. That means the aggregate turnover is above 5 crore, I have to file R9 and 9C. R9, though in each state is sub 2 crores, I still have to file it. Hope that is clear to me. Then question from Pavan, we agree that only whatever tax turnover needs to be disclosed, but in R9. R9 is only measured to correct any mistakes in 1 and 3B. Hence, disclosing the undisclosed turnover and discharging taxes through DRC 03 would be a measure of action, right? That's perfect. So you can think GSTR 9 is a last opportunity to correct the mistakes that have been passed due to. By November, I should have corrected my GSTR 1 or 3 B. I didn't correct it. So that means say I have to pay some extra taxes. I didn't pay it. So is R9 my last rescue? You will be discharging through DRC 03 and you are reporting in R9 stating that, yes, this is my final statement of affairs with respect to GST for this financial year. So that's right. Your understanding is right. Power. Then the next question is from Naresh, where purchase values were not disclosed anywhere in GST R9, not required to disclose any purchase values uh, in the R9 because it's only an input tax credit that is required. So that any ITC that has been missed in 3B and the same has been there in 2B, can we avail in GSTR 9? 
stages ni gscr nine is not a place to either report or avail any input tax credit additionally you cannot you will not be able to do that uh, aggregate turnover is always pan india based answer is yes does debit notes and credit note where to disclose i'll get into li little details of uh, the reporting of it but let's look at the context uh missed out outward supply for financial year 21 22 but amended in 22 23 where do we show yes the part 2 is uh, we will get into detail but if you have paid you will be showing it mostly table 4 and some portions in table 10 we will understand little detail of it how reliable is 8a of gscr 9 as it is ever changing pavan um, will i'll answer it when it comes can we report credit note additionally in r9 no additional reporting in r9 r9 is what is so is what is so all right now i'll move to 9c 9c contrary to r9 9c is what should have been r9 is what it is 9c what should have been so 9c was an audit report all this was and since last year it has become self certified in fact you should advise the clients the moment it became self certified the onus on the client to making it right has become more responsibility it has to be doubly validated by a tax advisor tax expert like us so that there are no errors because earlier we had a disclaimer to the best of my knowledge the best of my knowledge has been removed now it is like true and correct you are certifying that everything is correct so there is no rescue so the way this form has been designed so 9c is divided into part uh, five parts and again beautifully drafted uh, form so the context of 9c is what should be context of 9 is what it is so what i have done is my what i should have done is 9c if whatever i have done and what should have done is same 9c will not have an additional adjustment but what i have done is different from what i should have done so 9c will have an additional reporting again let's understand different parts so the part 2 talks about the turnover part 3 is tax liability part 4 is the input tax credit and part 5 is the discharge of additional liability and uh, uh, if i have to let me just yeah like if i have to explain uh, like how do we relate 9 and 9c let's look at the context of 9c i said 9c is what is so 9 is what i have done 9c is what i should have done so 9c is i am in a right spirit what i should have done is 9c so you know like every month we know the the sufficient tax discharge that is happening to the government we are at 1.5 lakh crore of the gst collection so when we say gst collection what the government is saying is government is saying taxes paid even if you talk to the businessman in a layman language if the businessman talks about the gst payment every month he is talking about the tax that he is paying every month and if i have to further explain gst tax paid so how do we call it as a tax paid from the layman to an understanding like us we will say it is your liability it is your liability minus itc what we say is liability minus itc and when we say liability what is that we are saying liability is gross liability so liability when we say how do we compute if i have to give a mathematical thing we say turnover multiplied by rate of tax we say turnover multiplied by rate of tax and how do you get your turnover when we say turnover we are not talking about the total turnover you want your gross turnover what we are interested is we want a taxable turnover when we say turnover what we are saying is taxable turnover because that turnover on which the tax is payable that is what we are looking at and how do we get the uh, taxable turnover the taxable turnover is your if i say taxable turnover that means your gross turnover 
minus exemptions will give you the taxable turnover. So this is how you can determine your liability, correct? Now let's look at how GSTR 9C form has been designed. Your 9C table five deals with what is your gross turnover. You will explain what is your gross turnover in your table five of 9C. Ideally, this is the total turnover that should match with the total turnover that you are reporting in your GSTR 9. If this is not matching, you will give the explanation in table six. But what we are interested, we are interested only in taxable turnover. So we come, we reduce my, from the gross turnover, we will reduce my exemptions and derive at the taxable turnover. We report it in table seven of nine six. If that is not matching, we give the explanation of that in table eight of nine C. But am I interested in the turnover? Let's say my turnover is one crore. I have reported ten, one crore. But is that what government is interested in? Government is interested in the tax. I would have discharged at 12% as against 18%. So what I'm more interested is the turnover multiplied by rate of tax. I compute this and I report this in my table nine that this should be my turnover liability related on at various rates, including RCM. And if this is not matching, I give an explanation in table 10 of 9C. Owing to it, owing to it, all my turnover and liability, if there is a difference that is coming, I would report this turnover and the liability related in table 11, all right? This is on my turnover. When it comes to ITC, there is two things. The ITC, whether it is available and is it eligible? Yes, it is available, but is it eligible? These are the two questions we always check, right? So how do the government check? So they will look at the ITC availability. Is, there, is it there in the books of account? Is the purchase made or not? Is recorded and verified in table 12? It is simple like RBRS, which we do. And if this is matching perfectly fine, else the explanation is given in table 13. And is it eligible or not? Whatever I have availed, the eligibility of that is checked in table 14. And if it is not matching, I give my explanation in table 15. That means owing to my ITC, if there is any additional liability that is coming, I report that in my table 16. So, if combination of liability that is derived in 11 and 16 is what I now report in my part 5 as a additional liability in my GSTR 9C. So that's where I said this is again a very beautifully drafted form. Conceptually, one needs to understand that the data which has to be reported has been beautifully designed between 9 and 9C. Yeah. So let me now look at any questions then. So any questions on 9C for any of you? <clears throat> Pretty good. So either you completely understood and there's no question or you're still lost. But any case, don't worry. Sure. So now we understood 9 and 9C. How do I prepare it? What is the information that I require to prepare it? So I list out the information that is required to prepare it, and uh, we'll also use the tool. Uh, again, when I when I come to the tools, I will share the one Excel file which you can download. Uh, maybe parallelly, one someone want to work, you can work along with me. I'll I'll share you the Excel file. You can work. Uh, you need to have a tally data and an Excel uh, open with you, so that should be fine. So let's uh, understand this. Okay, there are some questions. Let me pick the question. What are the optional tables in R9? I'll come there. I haven't come. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not picking any questions in the chat tab, chat box. Please take the questions in your uh, question room. So there is. Uh, information that is required to file your GSTR 9. GSTR 9 is prepared by culmination of all this information. You need to have 
access to all this for preparing your annual return your r1 your 3b your books of accounts and your 2b data a combination of it this i will say it as a primary information with this you need to have an additional information if you say you have paid taxes in next year till november you need to know in 3b have i paid if i have used some taxes of the current year in the previous year so which means i need to have previous year gst r9 if i have paid taxes through drc03 you need to have a drc03 there is an additional information that needs to be reported which is of course optional at this point the notices and the demands related you need that information so this is the information that you would be needing it so let me explain you how you compute this turnover i'll go little step by step so in terms of computing your turnover in gst r9 and 9c first you got to freeze your turnover where is your turnover it could be anywhere in the financial side obvious thing is the credit side in the pnl account but i might have reimbursement which i would have netted off against the expenditure like section 15 where uh, 152 where the value would include all the all the additional debits that you are doing to the customer and by way of reimbursement my travel expense my hotel expense my uh, printing and stationery whatever which i am incurring in the course of conducting the audit on an actual basis i am recovering it from the customer still to be added in the taxable value i might have those uh, offset those collections with my either travel or accommodation or telephone in those heads but still for the purpose of gst this will be treated as a liability my supply could be there on the asset side i would have sold the fixed assets what is reported in pnl is only profit or loss on sale of the fixed asset but what is required for the liability is the gross value the only thing Uh, you have notification eight by two thousand eighteen where the supply of car. So there, since ITC is not available, so if it is uh, something thousand two hundred CC and above, you will pay on the profit if you are making at eighteen percent or at twelve percent. Again, if you are making a sale of an asset where you have availed an ITC, then you will apply uh, Rule forty four red with eighteen six, where you will be dividing the entire input tax credit into sixty months. and applying only those portion of itc which is used in the business so let's say i have purchased the asset and sold it after 2 years that means the balance 3 years i have availed itc but it is not put to use so you got to compute unutilized portion of itc vis a vis i have sold the asset let's say for 1 lakh and at 18 percent 18000 so 18000 or unused itc whichever is higher that should be treated as your liability that you need to pay now where do i find let's say the unused itc value is 24000 rupees 1 lakh into 24 there's no rate of tax 24000 uh, for me to discharge no problem you put it in your 9c other you will have an option to enter any value how about 9 9 absolutely don't worry in table 4 you don't have to give any rate wise reporting sometimes the turnover for the gst is on the liability side also if you have received any advances from the customer even that needs to be computed so i'll also again show you a two in the tool how do we identify if i have received any advances or if i have anything outstanding then there could be turnover which is outside my books of accounts schedule one because books of accounts you will record transaction only if there is a value monetary value if there is no monetary value you will not be reporting it so you got to add the schedule one transactions to the supply so in in nutshell how do you compute your supply so which means there is a difference between the turnover for the purpose of books and the turnover for the purpose of gst so how do i derive this the way you do you would derive is first and foremost you split the audited pan based turnover from one from the pan to each gst and wise you make a split of it and also identify how much is the schedule one transaction so this gst and y is the pan based turnover you make all these adjustments that you want to do whether it is valuation related whether it is schedule one transactions or whether it is an unbilled revenue there is a difference between time of supply you recognize the as 9 for the accounting standard uh, books of accounts but you have to apply section 12 and 13 time of supply for the purpose of gst these timing difference either upward or downward you will make those adjustments yeah 
compute and derive what is the turnover that you need to report for your GSTR 9. So from the book turnover, you derive the turnover, what you have to pay offer to the tax for GST. This turnover, whatever you have derived that you need to offer for GST, segregate into further multiple ways. If I have to pay, I have finalized that my turnover is say 7 crore 50 lakhs. This 7 crore 50 lakhs, have I reported in my GSTR 1? How much I have reported? Compute what is the tax rate. I have paid the taxes in 3B or not. Reconciliation 1. Reconciliation 2. How much is interstate interest rate? IGST, CGST, SGST, split it. Reconciliation 3. This 7 crore 50 lakhs, how much is 5%, 12%, 18%? Rate wise, you do the segregation. Last reconciliation, reconciliation 4. How much of it is B2B, B2C, uh, supply to SCZ, supply to export, debit note, credit note. So you got to do, once you derive the turnover, you got to split into four different types. So you need to create an Excel template or a utility so that you do step by step. The turnover is divided into these four different formats. Of course, all the four should yield you the same total. So you're splitting. So you have finalized the turnover, that turnover is split into these brackets. Again, while we're demonstrating a tool which is do, which is going to do automatically for you. So that's what I said, the turnover as per the book, uh, which is derived, split into rate-wise, split into B2B, B2C, and uh, if something is missing, how much? All those you got to reconcile, yeah? After reconciliation, if you have made some short payment of tax. Now you can pay through DRC03. The additional liability, it has to be paid only through cash. Ideally, that's what the portal says, only through the cash. There are some edge cases, some exceptions. In an exceptional scenario, it can be paid through ITC. I am not going to say that you can pay through ITC. There are very exceptions. Short payment of taxes, or I have claimed excess ITC or ineligible ITC, everything I can pay while filing my GSTR 9 or while filing my GSTR 9C. How do I report the turnover and liability? Turnover is reported, I said, into two tables, table four and table five. Table four is pretty detailed, very beautifully it's drafted form. 4A is B2C, 4B is B2B, 4C is exports with payment, 4D is supply to SCZ with payment, 4E is deemed export, which is taxable outward supply. 4F is advances that you have received. So it's not a supply, you agree to make a supply, so invoice would be there in next year. So that will come under 4F. You also have a liability on account of reverse charge. The reverse charge is computed in 4G. Now, all this while, there was an exemption given to report of credit notes and debit notes. So 4i is reduction in turnover, 4j is debit notes. 4k is amendment upward, 4l is amendment downward. Those who are filing annual returns, you should be knowing these subtables also so that you know appropriately where do I report my turnover. For example, GSTR1, I filed everything under table 7 as B2C. Can I correct it now? Yes, you should correct it. You should report under 4B and you should not report under 4A. Error can happen, but GSTR 9 is a last opportunity to report what is the right turnover. After reporting the taxable turnover on which the transaction tax liability is there, the exempted turnover goes to table 5. When I say exempted, the right word is the outward supplies on which tax is not payable. The, so it means it's not an exempt supply, but it's a supply, but where there's no tax liability. That is export without payment of tax, SCZ supplies without payment of tax, all this gets reported here. <clears throat> so your total turnover is 4N, which is taxable, 4N minus 4G, which is taxable outward, and exempted is 5M. So ensure all these are reported. So also, there are other sources you have to check. You have filed your GST, uh, sorry, income tax tax audit report. You have 26 AS. You have uh, the uh, TDS returns that have been uh, disclosed. You should use all the sources of information that is officially available outside. Because when you log into AIS, you see the GST data. You log into GST, you see the IT return file information. You also have to have a look about tagging those information.
So with this, I have come to the end of the turnover related declaration. Let's move to ITC related declaration. If there are any questions on the turnover, I'll pick up those questions because I also want to spend equal time on the usage of the tool. Uh, let me see if there are any questions in the... Uh... Okay. So Subramanya has hinted GSTR nine for nine months and to be for uh, three months. Yes, in the ITC we will go. We are going to discuss this. Uh, Bharati, but in nine C part B was not there last week when I downloaded and filed. But now it's asking me to mandatory filing information of CA. Uh, please suggest, uh, Bharti, I think if you're filing for the earlier period, earlier periods, you will still have to do what the form which is there as on that date. Uh, should input tax credit data be compared with the 2A or 2B Nandini? I'm going to answer it now. Uh, GSTR 9, as is basis, we cannot make any adjustment in R9. We shall file the auto-computed R9 as it is. No, Madhu sir, your understanding is wrong. Uh, if there are, if you have to file an auto-computed value, then there is no requirement of we filing it. If the auto-computed values only I have to file, then there is, why should I fill it? Because it's already filled. So government. no, I would say R9 is the opportunity, last opportunity to do a right reporting of the information that you have done it. Uh, Mukul has raised a hand. Mukul, you would want to uh, uh, add something? No, sir, nothing. Sorry, that was my mistake. Yeah. Okay. Um, 2A, 9 months, uh, 2B, 3 months. I'm going to come in a while. Uh, input reconcile with 2A, is it mandatory? Yes, Naresh, it is mandatory. Uh, GSTR 9, we have answered as is basis. Non-taxable supplies, which is shown in GSTR 1 financial year 21-22, should it be shown in R9? Yes. You have to show in R9 all the turnover, taxable or not taxable. For example, I am a proprietor. In my books of accounts, I have salary income, which is Schedule 3 supply. Uh, let's say some mutual fund gain, which I have. So where should I do show turnover? So you will also use in your exempted turnover, there is something called non-GST supply, which includes no supply also. Ideally, the attempt is to include entire credit, which is there in the PNL, so that in one go, you will be able to, during the assessment, you should be able to track it. Uh, Sumuk is saying turnover includes interest income, dividend income, or only aggregate turnover. For the purpose of computing the turnover limit of applicability of 9 and 9C, two subsection 6 aggregate turnover, which will exclude no supply. However, while reporting, after choosing the form while reporting, you will report no supply also. Uh, Shashikala, where do I report if export turnover wrongly declared with payment of tax, but actually without payment of tax, only option is selected is GST. So you, you made an error in GSTR1. In GSTR1, you by mistake, you ticked as with payment of tax, but you did not make any payment of tax in 3B and you have an LUT, where do I declare? Since it is not a transaction with the ta taxable, you will not report it in table four, Shishikala. You will be reporting it in table five. All right. There's a little lengthy question. SSC has been rented a commercial space for business. During 21-22, the SSE has vacated. However, landlord had issued a tax invoice after the vacation. The SSE has not claimed ITC and requested the landlord to issue a credit note for the same, but landlord did not do so. SSE has raised a debit note while filing 3B. The same was noticed during the audit, so it could not be amended within the same period. Is there a way in annual return to rectify the same? Okay, Arsena, to put short your question, I made a supply by way of invoice. Actually, I did not do a supply. It's like since SSE, the tenant vacated, ideally I should not have raised an invoice, but I have raised an invoice. I should cancel that invoice. It's a supply did not even happen. So merely raising an invoice is like you have provided or agreed to provide it. 
so you need to issue a credit note the concept of debit note credit note is only from the supplier the recipient providing a debit note is not equal to supplier issuing a credit note supplier has to issue a credit note this credit note should be issued on or before 30th november and that is the right way of doing it what do you mean by deemed exports uh, again i'm not picking that what is scz supply i'm not picking that so at the end if there is a time permit please ask right now i'll restrict only questions to r9 uh, non gst supply means petrol and diesel yes you can no supply uh, non 9 subsection 2 or schedule 3 everything you can report it under 5f perfect we have answered all the questions relating to turnover and uh, uh, subramanya and mukul uh, if you feel something to be added feel free to uh, correct it also okay let's move to itc itc as i said we have three tables table 6 7 and 8 table 6 is the availment of input tax credit that means what i have availed is what i will be reporting here table 7 is reversal of input tax credit if i have reversed some input tax credit i'll be reporting here and table 8 is reconciliation with the 2 year this when it comes to gst r9 and when it comes to 9c table 12 whether i have availed whether it is there in the books of account when i have availed this year next year all those reconciliation and how much is eligible how much is ineligible and segregating expenditure wise is in table 14 this is what we are going to report in my GSCR nine and nine six. How do I freeze my input tax credit? First and foremost, you need to have an access to the books of account. The expenditure wise, the input tax credit. So they segregate all the expenditures between with ITC without ITC or with GSC without GSC. Those which are with GSC identify whether it is eligible or not eligible, and those which is not without GSC. see if there is any exempt or non gst that exists or rcm that exists yeah so the reason why we segregate why i asked to do this while preparing r9 you definitely need to know how much of the expenditure is without gst how much of it is rcm because rcm if you do in a timely manner avail report and avail input tax credit you have if you miss out Two years, three years later, in the GST department audit finds it. You only have a liability and no ITC. You cannot plead on revenue neutrality. That's when you will have a loss of taxes. Again, those expenditure way which you are doing with the GST, you have to see whether it is eligible or ineligible. This classification is something that you need to be doing. And how do you use the input tax credit? We know. section 17 gives you a, a, a detailed explanation as to how we have to report my a report and use the input tax credit the time limit to avail is 30th november the tool which i'll demonstrate will give you an option how much of the credit is matching with the portal how much of the credit is appearing only in the books and not in portal that is where you can see whether you can apply 36 of rule 4 and if the credit is only in the portal and not in the books you have you have to see whether it is missed in accounting or ineligible not your credit where do i report it in your at or appropriately atf where do i report is what we have to see and here is where both subramanya and someone was hinting that uh, should it be 2a or 2b ideally it is 2b however the the rule 36 sub rule 4 got amended time to time and effective from 1st jan 22 this year where the government said you can take credit only if it is there in your 2a within filed within time that is 2b prior to that the government was allowing you can take 5% of the credit over and above what you are you are seeing which is visible this 5% was like a temporary credit credit will eventually be there at a different point in time credit will be there at a different point in time when we say different point in time the supplier could have filed it in april may june july august september by november that means in table 8 a of gstr 9 c it so gstr 9 it should appear my 2a in the month of april is 100 
my 3b in the month of april 21 i'm talking is 105 i have taken 5 rupees more than what is there no issue that supplier should have reported it on or before 30th number if the supplier reports on or before 30th number it would find a place in table 8a and what you are claiming in table 6b both will be matching again pardon me for this table number uh, since i am into this uh, domain i will have to be using and uh, wherever you are where uh, making note of table numbers it will be useful while you are actually doing it yeah so the instances when itc has to be reversed whether it is ineligible under 17 subsection 5 or reversal in case of non payment within uh, to the vendor within 180 days rule 37 Again, I'll demonstrate another tool. How do I identify this uh, 180 days? The ineligible credits we know. So eventually you got to reconcile how much of the credit is there in the books and how much of the credit you have availed. So in my books, which is there, availed in next year, I reduce. Brought forward from the previous year, I add. Do some reconciliation, get a hold of the macro level data. So GSTR 9 and 9C is both a science and an art. You need to know the precise mathematical formulas as to how do you do the reconciliation. Then you need to know where you have to report and how you have to adjust the reporting of it. Moving on to the reconciliation with the uh, the next item, which is RCM. 9.3 and 9.4. 9.4 is only for the works contract. 9.3 is all notified purchases. Uh, nine, the nine three is a vast area. It has been increasing time to time. So what I have highlighted in the blue color is what you will have to be careful of because most of the businesses will have. So I have highlighted it in blue color. So only when we say nine three people know GTA legal, but there are many beyond GTA legal. There are many things time to time getting added. In fact, recent addition is renting of a mobile property from uh, 1st June of this year. If you are making a payment to a landlord and landlord is not registered, you pay under RCM. So time to time, these expenditures are getting added. That is where I said you got to prepare expenditure with GST, without GST. Uh, good, very small list. So now let's see reporting and reconciliation. Firstly, the reporting of the RCM is there, liability side in 4G, ITC side in 60 and 6D. From the unregistered dealer purchases is in 60 and registered dealer purchases in 6D. The control point is the sum total of ITC, both 60 and 6D should be lower than the 4G. That means my tax payment, you cannot have zero liability but availment under ITC. Likewise, in your GSTR 2A, you have an option to filter and see who are the suppliers who have supplied to me where they say they are saying that I have to pay under reverse head. Check that and do a data entry. Lastly, on the adjustment, so that is missed out turnover which you are reporting, where do you do? So the missed out turnover, if you have paid it in GSTR 9C, if you have paid it in GSTR 9C, through 3B, if you have, sorry, not 9C, if you have paid through 3B, your liability you have paid through 3B, then you will report that in your table 4. If you have paid the taxes through 3B, you will be reporting that in table 4. If you have paid it, but you have paid it in the next year, if you have paid it in the next year, then you will be reporting in table 10. You will be reporting in your table 10. So it is very important for us to understand where are we reporting these turnovers. So the reporting of turnovers in the respective periods is very much important. Now, 3B of the previous year, it means 3B of the previous year, it means table 4. 3B of the current year, 3B of the current year, it means table 10. 3B of the previous year is table 4. 3B of the current year is table 10. So get understanding of this very clearly. 
current year means up to November. So these are the two tables that you'll report. Missed out turnover, you are paying through DRC03. The DRC03 value goes to table four. This is the total liability that you have paid. In fact, I will say books turnover could be a wrong word. The turnover on which the taxes are paid, the turnover on which the taxes are paid, paid through 3B in the previous year, table four, paid through 3B in the current year, table 10. If you have adjusted, it will be table 11. Instead of this, you are paying through DRC03, then it is table four. This is a simple math. If you know this correctly, then reporting will not have an issue. Today, the assessment notices are system driven. System is going to check for this. And uh, the summary, the total turnover is there in your table four, 10 and 11. Total liability is there in table nine and table 14. The taxes paid also is there in table nine and table 14. This is what one has to understand about GSTR nine and nine C. Before I go on to the reporting changes that is specifically for this year, let me look at if there are any questions. How reliable is GSTR 9 table 8A press for one reliable according to me? Uh, where would data in 8A be captured? Uh, I will demonstrate a live uh, 8A. Santosh, in case of credit note appearing in 2B, but the copies are not received, what is the impact to be taken in 3B or 9C? Credit note appearing in 2B, but the physical copies might you might have not received. What is the impact? That's okay. Uh, your your e-document can also be treated as a physical document. How table 9 and 14 would add up to the liability to the table 10, 11, 12 not to be considered? Okay, uh, Jigar, uh, the, uh, the values in table 4 goes to table 9, values in table 10 and 11 goes to table 14. So that is where 9 and 14. Table 12 is only an information table, so ignore table your question, table 12, you can ignore it. All right. So let's look at the reporting changes that have happened in the current period. Uh, debit notes and credit notes were earlier optional. Now it is made mandatory, so you cannot net it off. Exempted turnover, earlier exempted nil non-GST we were showing in one turnover. Government said segregate non-GST, put it under 5FG, 5F. Exempt non nil can be merged, but no supply, move it to 5F. ITC uh, from registered unregistered, they said segregate and show it. Table 17 HSN wise reporting is now mandatory. Six digits for five crores and above, up to five crores, four digits. Uh, table 10 is additions or amendments. It should only include if the taxes paid through 3B. It is not through DRC03. Next, RCM related reporting should not be in table 10. It should be moving to the next year. Table 13 is the ITC that is availed in the subsequent year up until November, not September, up until November, you have to report here. Table 6 ITC, earlier when you can't do it, the government said you merge everything, but now it is clear that the capital goods have to be segregated and reported separately. Table 18, HSN wise summary reporting, it continues to optional and uh, the uh, the last table last part your part six continues to be remain remain optional other than table 17. these are the notification 14 but 2022 when it comes to your 9c they said the 12 table 12 is mandatory earlier that was optional and this is where i said that they have removed the two best of my knowledge has been omitted so 9c now has to be more precise and accurate Uh, in 9C, table 5, if you can't do the turnover wise reconciliation, you continue to report it in 5O. Table 14, they still continue to make it optional. But however, class 44 of the tax audit report was not optional. If you have reported information there, the same information. 
uh, part B, the auditor recommendation is not there, but your liability to discharge other information is there in your 9C. Okay, so let's move to the question and answers before I look at any demo. What is penalty for 9 and 9C? 0.25% of the turnover in the state the CGST and SGST is the liability which you do not pay. So every day it is 100 rupees subject to the maximum of 0.25%. In 6B, should we take gross ITC or should it be taken net of reversal? It should be taken the gross ITC. Whatever, when I say gross, the credit notes is what I'm presuming. The credit notes you will be reporting in your table 7. Both are okay. As long as you have an explanation, both are okay. Whether we have to check uh, rule 86B, mother. Uh, see, you are fulfilling conditions which are given uh, for the purpose of uh, the export or the other conditions that are there in terms of whatever the ITC that you are availing, say minimum 1% to be discharged, so some various criteria that need to be fulfilled. Ideally, you have to do it. And if it is not, you will anyhow be getting a notice. If in GSTR1 we have reported turnover net of credit notes, should we bifurcate in RNA? Poonamji, I don't, in 3B, I can understand you can report net of credit note. How in R1 you can report credit note, net of credit note, because credit note is in a separate section, uh, which is in table 9, and uh, the taxable turnover reporting is in table 4 and uh, 7. You can't in any way do a net, so it has to be, in, yeah, if in 3B you have given a net of, that's perfectly fine. In R1, uh, R1 information you have details. In your table four, report it in your 4A, 4K, you make those segregation and report it. That, that's perfectly fine. All right, so we have answered these questions. I'm just removing those questions for my ease so that I can only see open questions. Perfect. So let me share. Uh, Venus, sir, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, just one question here. Uh, yeah. Late fee and penalty, will it be charged on 9 if it is delayed in filing or will it only be late fee? Okay, it will only be the late fee. Wherever the late fee is defined under the law, I don't uh, see a reason why there will be a uh, penalty also. According to me, it is only late fee. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So I have given two URLs uh, using which you can uh, uh, download two Excel files. Venu um... sir, Ganesh here. Huh? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, this one in HSN outward, uh, 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 we have to mention the rate wise uh, rate also. So uh, whether we need to ensure that that should match with table 9 of GSTR 9C, excluding RCM. Uh, advanced you don't need to uh, have it for advances. So you reduce the advances and uh, the portal doesn't uh, portal doesn't check the validation for B2C. So ideally it should be excluding 4F, it should match. Okay, okay, thank you. And 4G. Okay, thank you, sir. So I have shared uh, two links in the chat. When you click on that link, let me just share the screen. I have shared uh, two links. There, there is the chat. Yeah. So when you click on this, this link, so I'm clicking the first one, extract ledger voucher. So it will give you the thing. Don't try to do anything on the Excel. Please download it as an Excel file as it as such. So you just uh, file uh, download as an Excel file. Just download this as an Excel file asset. So because it had uh, some power queries and other information. So once you download this Excel file, let me just open the Excel file. Uh, first is on the ledger watchers report. So you will be seeing a file uh, ledger watchers report. Okay. So I have the tally data. 
here is my tally data i am i will be explaining it how this tool works and what this uh, it do uh, hope you have downloaded the file and you have the tally data you can work parallelly or just make notes pretty simple uh, thing in fact uh, i don't understand any complicated stuff so just for me to understand i have to simplify so anything i do i only simplify and break it into a simple thing so that i can understand so if i am able to do anything that means everyone anyone can be able to do so what does this excel file do so here is the uh, excel file i first have to my step one i have to extract what are the ledgers i want basically i want for my table 14 for my computing uh, expand uh, vouchers with gst without gst all those things sorry i did this huh. so i have an excel file and i have a tally data in my tally data i am going to my my duty syntax gst so everyone have different ledgers which people create okay so i am picking my input gst you can actually do this for your output uh, also for your analysis of the sales and everything so i'm the easy of it i'm doing input gst input sgst input igst so you can apply this i want to extract the data so what i have done you can open your tally data write down which is the ledger you want to open it uh, right now i have hard coded so i've just given the date here but you put whatever the date in the code i have hard coded it so this is a, by the way pretty large data it's not a uh, this has some 52000 vouchers 52000 vouchers is a reasonably large so there's a lot of purchases uh, the uh, it is there so what i am doing is i will go to the ledger voucher report i will be going to my ledger voucher report uh, you can see there is a table design and a query, which means some query I have written. So there is the data. So you can click on the table design and hit this button called refresh. You can hit on the table design and hit this button called refresh. Or you right click on the table, you right click on the table and hit the button called refresh. So in both the way you can refresh by right clicking on the table or you can do it what does it do uh, it may take anything between one to three minutes basis the volume of the data how will you know it is done you can see at the bottom of the screen at the bottom of the screen here it is saying running a query in the background it is saying it is running a query in the background. That means it is extracting all the data that is required. So from this 52,000 vouchers, it has extracted all the data that is required. Okay. What did it do? It got the vendor name, it got the party GST number and the GST amount and whichever is the ledger. So it got some information. Okay. Now, the excel i am sure we are all masters in excel so let's say it it only gave me debit credit i want to get the net amount uh, i want to there will be you know you will be moving the ledger from input gst to your output gst or offset some ledger so if you want to consider or ignore some uh, items you can just map it and see uh the debit in tally debit will always be negative credit will always be uh positive yeah um wherever party gst is gstn is missing then you can also see why gstn is missing uh so by default I'll, we can just apply a simple plot and just putting it as consider and uh, so let me see why gst numbers are missing you can see there are rpm some bank charges so we know the electronic ledgers are my offset ledger they are not the real ledger the rpm is also the offset ledger so i can ignore these ledgers i can say ignore so 
I can also set my other ledger. So I can say, I can just ignore it. And um, so you also know which is the table, just the moment you click on this, you can know the table name of it. So this is called, I have written it as final table. Uh, now I'm just inserting a pivot. So I can just go to insert a pivot table, pivot table for the final table in the, uh, I'm just for the ease of it, I'm inserting it in the right side of here. I'm inserting in the existing. Require to answer, oh, sorry. Final table inserted into a pivot table here. So let's see what does uh, this you will be able to do now. I am pulling the data. I am, I want the party name by party yeah here we go we can just do the beautification I'm just sorting the data smallest to the largest so that we know what values have come. And I only need the values that I need to consider. So here we go. You have all the uh, information that is required. How much is CGST, SGST, IGST? You have all the information that is required by each of the vendor, the information uh, you have, right? So this is how you will be able to prepare the information. This is how you will be able to prepare the information. So anyone, any doubt in uh, in understanding uh, this? If you have any questions in this before I move to the next one, uh, you can ask. So, in one go, in like assuming you, you might have some tool where you want to map with the GST number, you can in one go, you get the all the information by GST number also. So that you want the date, all the fields are there automatically, like say on a click of a button, you got this information directly from the portal. So is this uh, clear? Anyone has any doubts in this? Uh, Tejasini, if GSCR 9 is not filled because of the turnover, what are the consequences? The late fee is applicable. How to make reversal of common credit for financial year 21-22 if you have not in 3B? Uh, Madhu, you pay through DRC03 and report it in your table 9C. Can we use the same template for tally prime? This perfectly fine works for tally 6.3 onwards, 7, 8, 9, and tally prime also. How did the data get imported into Excel from Tally? Could you please reiterate? Uh, so today there is something called ODBC open data, which you can communicate uh, between two sources. So I have written a small query, which is running in the background. Your job is to refresh this. Like when you buy a car, you don't need to know how the engine works. You need to know where to press the accelerator and this and the car moves. So after that, where you want to go is like your, your job. Likewise, how you want to drive this is your job. Perfect. So with this, uh, we have answered these questions. Let me go to the other tool. And let me go to the other tool. So the other tool is the 
getting the data getting the data for managing your rule 37 or for managing various for managing the various uh, reasons so you need to have you need to have the vendors from which you for to whom you have not made the payment you need to have the vendors from who to whom you have not made the payment or the customer from whom you have received the money in advance the customer from whom you have received the money in advance right so let me show how this tool works so again i have shared in the chat the another tool extract overdue data so you open the tool it has some version uh, right now this is this is the version and uh, let me just refresh the first one it will show you your list of uh, okay this is actually uh, not required but because i have hard coded it so if you come to your outstanding of the data all that you will do is you go to your outstanding hit the refresh button hit the refresh button so there is uh, this tally data it is saying this is the tally data so it has extracted the information like how you have to do small work for uh, small work for the other thing you might also have to do small work here so i have given an aging analysis however you want to make an aging analysis so there is the age formula which i have written for the first four columns you can just use that and uh, copy it up until the end you can copy it, the formula till the end yeah once this is copied there is an aging report this is a pivot table just come and refresh this come and refresh this now what is that we want to know we want to know two things one first i want to know my current asset which is sundry basically i want to know my sundry data in my sundry data if i have any positive number which means it is an advance received from my customers so you you can just walk glance through this data or you can just sort it by smallest to the largest yeah there is no advance received from the customer then what do you want you want to know your sundry creditor you want to know your sundry creditor and you want to know if you have which are the people whom you have paid late now more than 180 days so here are these vendors where you have paid where, where it is outstanding more than 180 days so i've just only extracted what i need so 180 days to 365 and 365 and above these are the people i have not made any payment hence i need to compute the itc on that and i need to reverse it so the way again let me just tell you the way it works is you got to keep your tally data open point number one you got to keep your tally data open point number two you see go to this outstanding just right click and hit the refresh button and there is a pivot table which is already prepared so you will be able to see this in the pivot table so these are the two excel utilities definitely one should be aware of of uh, or use it to simplify your life while preparing your r9 and 96 any questions uh gauri manjunath when i clicked on refresh i am getting an error maybe uh you which version of uh, uh, the tally excel you are using i don't know ideally you should be uh, having the uh, office 365 or two, 2016 and above then it would be work are uh, using this tool for aging analysis is bill wise booking mandatory yes uh, the way the premises it which is you are booking bill wise only then i will i can do that people adjustment and see which bills are outstanding bigger uh, punam how did the data got imported from excel to tally punam on the table right click and refresh so you do that it gets imported right so we have seen the first demo use of microsoft excel in automation
Then the second demo, I am using another utility. This is the utility which we use in the office, uh, where this is a cloud application which is Tally on Wheels. Again, uh, the objective, the advantage of this utility, let me just go back to that screen where I said the information that is required for our annual return. So for filing your annual return, I said the data can lie anywhere. Your data can lie anywhere. Could be it will you need all this information and this information for preparing your GSTR mine. So that is where again this tool will be useful. So the second tool which I am demonstrating is this, which will be useful, which will extract the data from the government portal automatically. So for this, I what I need is I need the tally data. So, yeah, so I need a tally data. Let me show you. So I have a tally data for the financial year 21-22. There is a tally data. And this is a cloud-based application. So let me go to the cloud. Yeah, here is the thing. So, so this is Tally on Wheels is the uh, URL name. So Tally on Wheels. So let me log in uh, to this application. Yeah. So, okay, since I already logged in, it just jumped into it. Uh, you can create your own login. So once I log in, I have to do first if the company is not there. The way, in fact, this works is I create a group or I create an entity. Let's say I create an entity called KSCA. I create this entity and uh, I can add many companies in this entity under KSCA. So there are no companies. Let me add a company. And uh, so to add this company, you need to have a utility. So first time when you are doing, it will say that you need a connector. I click this uh, button. <clears throat> it will download an, uh, a small utility. It is a one-time installation of a thing which will extract the data from the tally for reconciliation automatically. So I open this utility, it's a one-time thing. Uh, if you are using Windows, hit this more information and uh, run anyway. So this utility will help you to sync the data from the tally for the purpose of all these things which we have seen to extract all this information. That is what this utility is going to do. So once I do it, Let me. Yeah. So I have installed the agent. Where did it go? Yeah, it's here. Yeah, so the moment it is done, it is add your, there are no entities. So I'll say add my tally company. I'll just hit this button called add. So the moment I do it, it will automatically add it. So it's like it's done. I have an option to sync the data. So I just press this button, uh, 2122, all the information for the financial year 2122 gets seamlessly synced. In fact, we use this tool extensively for our touch audit, internal audit and everything, including our 
GST annual return uh, filing because it is going to do all the information that is required. So now that the company is added, let me go to go back. Uh, uh, I want to file my GSTR 9 and 90. I want to file my GSTR 9 and 90. So, yeah, so I'm selecting this company. There is a demo data. So, Italian wheels demo. So, I'm selecting this. I'm saying GSTR 9 and 90 preparation is what I want to do. I hit this button prepared GSTR 9 and 90. So what does this do? This do, uh, this will do a multiple job. Whatever which I have said, it is going to fetch the data. It is going to fetch the data from the government portal. So all my R, R1, 3B, everything will be fetched. Again, just a matter of uh, a couple of uh, minutes. So the data is uh, fetched. So how does it fetch it? So here, First, I have to log in using OTP. So I have to, in the GST port, GSTN portal, I have to enable the OTP access because that's the right and authenticate way, authenticated way of accessing a different GSTN data. So enable the OTP. I'll say log in using the OTP and uh, I enter the portal name, confirm the username password, confirm the do you don't re need the uh, password, you only need the username. The moment I confirm, I would get an OTP on my mailbox. So here is the OTP. So let me take the OTP. And so I am now logged in to the government portal through OTP. So it says once after the OTP, it will be valid for a period of six hours. So what does this do? Now, on a just click of a button, I need the data for the period. I need the data for the period April 21 to March 22. I need it for the period April 21 to March 22. So again, all that I do is I just click this button. All the information is what I want. I'm selecting all and I'm saying download from the government portal. In a normal course, if you have to download each month, I go GSTR 1. April, May, June, July, put it in Excel, download or JSON file, download, use a tool to convert. Every time when I hit download, it will take 15 minutes for each of the months. So I have to download R1, I have to download 3B, I have to download 2A, I have to download 2B. Now, if you can see on the left side, it is just downloading May, it is complete. It's a tax return summary complete. Downloading June, uh, it's complete. So you can see, Step by step, each month it is downloading the data from the government portal. So the data from the government portal is seamlessly it has downloaded into the into the books of account. Once this download is happened, so what is that I need to do? I also I said in the earlier slide I have to reconcile. I have to reconcile my data of how much is there in 2A, how much is not there in 2A. I am now using the word 2A. What is the difference between 2A and 2B? It's only a timing difference, but on a larger scale, both will match. So now I'm using 2A for the purpose of reconciliation. So I'm going here. So all the month's data is automatically, it is downloading. I'm saying upload purchase register. So I'm saying upload the purchase register. So I have to get the data from the tally to do the reconciliation of the purchase data. In fact, it is doing the uh, HSN summary, all the information that is required, it is going to do seamlessly for us. We don't need to do an additional job. So it says, this is the data I find. I'm saying, okay, use this company and use the existing ledgers that I have already imported. I'm importing the transactions for the period April 21. To March 22. So again, it is all step by step. So I am importing this data because I have to reconcile how much of the data which I have availed in 3B is matching with 2A, how much I have to carry forward to next year. So what should I report in table 12 of 9, table 13 of 9, table 8C of 9? 
for which I need to know how much of my purchases have been reconciled or not. Using the earlier tool, we could extract the data from Excel, from Tally and I have put it into Excel. But I need to again download the data from the government portal, which is 2A. And again, I have to see how much of it is matched, how much of it did not match. All those exercises, I have to do it manually if, I, if I'm using Excel utility. But this utility is taking the data from the tally, which is, and by the way, this is only for the tally. So this utility is taking the data from the tally, all the relevant uh, vouchers, and it is also reconciling with what is there in the government portal so that what data has to go to R9 in which table. So entire data has come. Let me just download this Excel. Let's download this Excel and see what has come. Let me just open this Excel. So this is the Excel that has come. So I have uploaded the data. It says some entries is welcome. I am saying confirm and save these entries. So these are automatically uploaded for the purpose of reconciliation. Let's see what is there in the sector. So I have my tally purchase register. By the way, this it is little more beautiful than the earlier Excel. In the earlier Excel, I have only got the vendor name. I on, in the earlier Excel, I only got the vendor name. But now it is also saying, where is that vendor classified as? Which ledger in tally it has been booked as? What is the ledger type? Whether it is expense or capital goods, capital assets, all those additional classifications it is going, it is also doing. And it is also giving me other vouchers. And my it has extracted the trial balance for the period, both debit credit. And more importantly, it is giving me a reconciliation saying that, hey, look, the, um, let me please the header. Hmm. So it is uh, saying, okay, value of this purchase of IGST in trial balance is so much basis the GST I have found so much and if there is any difference. Let's say staff welfare, you have incurred 65,000 but I did not find any expenditure on staff welfare in, in the uh, utility. So it is also trying to give you table 14 related information and also match it. And this, the data once it is there in Excel, we all can do pivot table everything. So it is also able to recognize whether it is the a purchase or it is a journal, it is a payment like bank charges is a payment, all those things it is also able to recognize and prepare it. Now what is next? So my Excel, uh, so I have uploaded everything, I have downloaded, I have uploaded the purchase entry. So continue preparing your GSTR 9. So I'm saying prepare your GSTR 9. This is the important step. So there is a utility, you have to say run GSTR 9 matchup. So it is requesting to match to do the GSTR 9. So it has done the GSTR 9 matching. What does that mean? What did it do? It matched the books of accounts turnover, GSTR 1, 3B, and imported the data. And according to it, I'm not saying that the tool will give you the perfect R9. If the tool is going to give us perfect R9, then our role itself will go off. So it has prepared the uh, thing and now it is ready for downloading my GSTR9. Let me click download my GSTR9. Download 21, 22, R9 working. Download. No, it is not downloaded. Yeah.
So now this utility <coughs> is preparing GSTR nine for us. What does now that means? Let me again go back to the same slide. What does that mean uh, for us? Is this utility is giving us all this information at one place? All the information at one place. Where is that? Where did it download? Yeah. Uh, let's wait. Let it get downloaded. Yeah, so the file got downloaded. Okay, it got downloaded multiple times. Let me open this utility which has down which has prepared. Enable editing. So it has downloaded a, a data. It has downloaded a data where it is saying this is your GSTR9. It has given all the information. It has given all the information which is relevant to your GSTR9. And it has given you, let me hide all the chat. Yeah. Let me zoom this for you. Okay. So there is a data which is called GSTR GST returns data, which means data which has been downloaded from the government portal. Then there is a reconciliation data. So it has reconciled something with the books versus R1, 3, 1, 2A, all those things. Then it has prepared my GSTR 9 working file and the turnover and ITC competition. Something it has prepared. Let us see all this information one by one. First, my GSTR 1. So it is said, this is your turnover. So, so this is the GST number. It automatically said, this is the GST number. This is the turnover in various tables of my GSTR1, including amendments. Someone was asking about credit notes, including amendments, credit note. This has, this tool has prepared. I have a home button. I just click on home button. I will navigate back here. And I want it to get the summary in little detail. I get month over month, what is my information? Month over month, whatever is my information, it is also preparing April, May, June, July, whatever is the information which is there, that information is also prepared, both 1 and 3B. More importantly, by GSCR 1 invoices by the filing period, this is one other beautiful report which I like from this tool is, now most of the times we don't compute interest for the delayed payment. Looking at the filing reporting details, it is also preparing a matrix. In this example, you can see, in this example, you can see that for the month of July, for the month of July, my turnover is totally 89 lakhs. How did I report? In July, I reported 44 lakhs. August, I reported 39 lakhs. September, I reported 4.9 lakhs. So this tool, is also giving me if I have to end up paying interest, which month where there is a wrong reporting or short reporting, it is giving me a adjustment. And up until November, whatever the corrections that have happened, it is taking care of that. It is taking care of the corrections up until November. Then this tool is also doing GSTR 2A versus 3B, which is already there in the portal. So this is the value which I'm finding in my 3B. This is the value in 2A. So in one month, I have short availed. One month, I have excess availed. YTD on an year two basis. So what is there in my uh, 3B? What is there in my 3B? Let, in this example is 17.53 lakhs. What is there in 2A is 15.7 lakhs. It says I have excess availed 1.82, which means in the subsequent period, it ideally should have come up, but it did not come up. <clears throat> so like this, there's a various information. GSTR1 data, 3B data, and what is the data of which is there in the government portal? So as per the government portal, whatever is the GSTR9 values are there, even that it has also brought. 
then we wanted this reconciliation how much is the data which is there in the books and how much is there in 2a so various basis the rate wise because we need rate wise invoice wise it is giving me a reconciliation books versus at a consolidated level you want at a line item wise level you want to do a reconciliation at a line item wise level you there is a, a report which is giving with at a line item wise level also the same data is their customer wise level also now what i am more interested in showing is gstr 9 working for this tool has prepared some gstr 9 this tool has prepared some gstr 9 so how much is the data and this data is coming from this sheet called turnover computation let's go there so you can see this it is asking the data, you report what is the turnover which is there as per books of accounts. Let's say as per books of accounts, I have 8 crores as my turnover, Okay, 8.5 as my turnover. And this is what we said. So this is my pan based turnover. How much you want to split the GSTN based? So the GSTN based split happened. And uh, let me... move the subtotals to the top so that it's easy for me yeah so then what is required for us is to adjustment unbuild revenue and let's say i had an unbuild uh, revenue in the beginning of the year which i have invoiced during the year let's say some 35 lakh okay and uh, i have also uh, received some ed uh, advances uh, from the customer Let's say I have received some 15 lakhs advances from the customer. And uh, end of the year, let's say I have some, again, unbill revenue. So let's put a different uh, number and some advances at the beginning of the year. Some, I'm entering some numbers. So I have derived what is the turnover for the purpose of GSC. How much of it is taxable non-GSC? It is asking. Let's say I have some 13 lakh 50,000 is exempt so it's saying okay 7.76 is what you have to pay and this is segregated into rate wise you this is what you have to give you the information for rate wise so it is trying to report in fact the advances the moment i said uh, the last the opening balance was some 25 lakhs closing balance some 35 lakhs so those adjustment also it has taken and it is saying that you have supposed to pay you are supposed to pay um, in this case, uh, 7 crore 94 lakhs, some 22 and 9 lakhs, 9 lakhs. What you have paid is this much information. What you have short paid is so much information. So it is giving me a bifurcation and a breakup. Let's say in my the tax paid details. So I can make these entries and adjustments. Likewise, my ITC also I can enter how much I want to report ITC as per books of account, how much I have reversed is there. And it is also saying what is that which is editable, what I can write it. So after that, it has computed and it has given me the working file, the working file for my GSTR 9. Ideally, this is what you should report in various tables of GSTR 9. It has made some adjustments and it is reporting. Now, people always have this question of table eight. Uh, let me show you the table eight. How do I report the values in table eight? So the table eight values, where do I report? What is the reconciliation? And there was also a question which asked about 8A versus 2A. There's a report called 8A versus 2A. Let me show you this report. So this says that the values that are there in my table eight in my 2a it is 4 crore 29 in 8a it is 4 crore 28 and uh, you can see igsc cgsc sgsc all these values it is trying to match what is the values which are there in 2a but not in 8a or it is there but it is, should be ineligible or eligible this segregation tool is automatically doing and extracting the information which is required for filing your gstr 9 
all that information is automatically extracted and given by the tool. That means in one go, all the information that is required for me to file my return is extracted and brought into one place. As I said, do not expect that this tool will give you R9, which you can print and send. Then that means then the purpose of human intellect is gone. The purpose of the tools is to give you an ability to take a better decision. That is what the tool is doing, right? So with this, we have come to reporting changes we have seen. Yeah, with this, we have, we have seen the Excel utility. We have seen the uh, other automation utility, which can simplify all your activity. Yeah, I have come to end of the presentation. Yes, we are just in time. So if there are any questions, let me take those questions now. Uh, it's asking for password, Excel utility. It won't, Poonam, just right click and refresh. Otherwise, you can just contact me. I'll uh, maybe which version, maybe we can just downgrade the Excel and send it to you. Uh, Gauri will, Manjunath, will the refresh work with the tally data open? Yes, tally data has to be open, only then the refresh would work. Are the Excel sheets useful only for the tally data? Can it be used for accounting packages like Zoho or Navision? Uh, the Excel tool right now is customized only for the tally data. If you are using, uh, like Zoho is a cloud, again, little complicated API integration, but you are using other desktop applications, you can just use that. Yeah. Uh, Poonam, I request don't open an XLS file, the higher version of the XLSX, it would work. Do we need to have the subscription of Tally on Wheels separately or existing Tally license? Uh, Tally on Wheels is a third party application, so you need to have a separate subscription. Uh, my screen is frozen. Okay, I just didn't notice it. Unable to see your screen. Oh my God, I don't know if something was uh, missing. Tally, okay, tool was working, super, thank you, Tejasvini. Uh, does this give line item wise reconciliation between 2A and books? Yes, Santosh, it will give you line item wise reconciliation. Tally on wheels, again, only for tally data? Yes, right now it's only for the tally data. All right, so I have answered. Rahul, thank you for sharing the insight. Thank you, got that. All right, with this, I think I have answered all the questions. Now, maybe if they can unmute yourself, uh, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the questions. And feel free to write to me if you have any more doubts on this. Now I'm open to take questions on GST other than nine and nine, because uh, I'm more uh, particular about the time in which allocated to me complete the session, but I'm available to take up any questions. Maybe you can unmute yourself and ask. But I should definitely um, appreciate uh, KSEA for uh, putting up this session in a timely manner and uh, Pramod and the team for doing a uh, beautiful job in conducting various uh, 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 sessions. Uh, thank you, KSEA, and thank you, participants, for your timely attention. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, actually, it was a beautiful session. Uh, uh, the questions and the participant also participated uh, uh, very nicely because the question, if you see, it is more than 50 and uh, all the questions has been answered. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm honored and lucky to have been given the opportunity to present the vote of thanks today. I would like to thank CA Venu Gopal Gala, sir, for explaining the use of Excel in preparation of GSTR and 99C, such an extraordinary way. I would also thank our president at KSCA. CA Pramo Srihari and uh, CA Subramanya BL, Chairman IDT Committee KSCA, for being ever supporting and encouraging us to conduct the sessions. I thank KSCA for uh, taking up an initiative in organizing such a knowledgeable, enriching uh, webinar. Finally, I would like to thank all the attendees for being a part of today's webinar. Before I conclude, I would like to bring the notice that all the uh, attendees that KSCA has planned. Uh, for many other sessions for the future and all such details are available in our portal uh, at ksca.com. Participants shall be able to refer uh, today's PPT and video at the KSCA website for their future reference. I would like to thank everyone again for making today's webinar 
success thank you all thank you venugopal sir thank you